Let's get started on your notes over X and Y intercepts. So these are the points where your graph crosses your X axis or your Y axis. So the first thing we're gonna look at is identifying X and Y intercepts. So here we have a graph below and I want you to identify the coordinates of the X and Y intercepts. So first let's label our axes. So here's our X axis and here's our Y axis. So my X intercept would be where this graph crosses my X axis right there. What is that point? It's three zero. So I'm gonna write it as an ordered pair. Three zero. What about my Y intercept? There's where the graph crosses my Y axis. So what's the ordered pair for that? Zero, negative two. So those are the two points that represent my X and Y intercepts. What do you notice? I notice that on my x-intercept, the y value is zero. Why would that be? Because on my x-axis, and remember your ordered pair, on my x-axis, am I moving up or down? I'm not, I just moved right one, two, three units, and I did not move up or down any, which means that coordinate that tells me if I move up or down is gonna be zero. And then my y-intercept is down here at zero, negative two. Did I move left or right at all? I did not. So that coordinate that tells me if I move left or right, which is the x-coordinate, is gonna be zero. I just moved down two, so that's negative two. So that leads me to this right here, and I know this is totally ridiculous what I'm about to do, but I have my students clap this. The x-intercept is when y is zero. The y-intercept is when x is zero. So, and I have them do it again. The x-intercept is when y is zero. The y-intercept is when x is zero. Because sometimes we just forget that. Like when we're looking at a table like this, identify the x and y-intercepts in the table below. Well, there's a point where I have a zero as an x-coordinate. And here's a point where I have a zero as a y-coordinate. So which is which? Well, the x-intercept is when y is zero. That's right there, which means that is my x-intercept. Two, zero. The y-intercept is when x is zero, which means right there is my y-intercept. Zero, three. So let's move on to using intercepts to graph equations. When we are given an equation, we can solve for the x-intercept by substituting zero for the value of y and solving for x. If the x-intercept is when y is zero, I can plug in zero for y and solve for x. Likewise, we can solve for the y-intercept by substituting zero for x and solving for y because the y-intercept is when x is zero. So let's look at that. So our first two problems right here are written in standard form, which is one of the benefits of standard form is you can easily see your X and Y intercepts as you practice this more. So let's first look at our X intercept and I'll kind of write it up here. Let's look at our X intercept. So the X intercept is when Y is zero. So I'm gonna plug in zero for Y and I'm just gonna solve for the value of X. So two times X plus three times, what am I gonna plug in for Y? zero equals nine. Well, three times zero is what? It's zero. So I'm just left with two X equals nine. And then when I'm solving for X, I'm just gonna divide by two and I get X equals nine over two. And for those of you who are not fraction people, what is that as a decimal? It's just 4.5. So my X intercept is at 4.5 on my X axis. A lot of times I will have my students write this as ordered pairs, so that's just going to be, let's write it as a decimal, 4.50, which is about right there. So now let's look at our y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x is 0. So what am I going to plug in for x? 0. So instead of 2 times x, it's 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 9. Well, what is 2 times 0? It's zero, so I'm left with three y equals nine. And then if I'm solving for y, I'll get y equals three. So if I write that as an ordered pair, that's gonna be zero, three. 
And if I graph it, it's right there. How many points do I need to graph a line? I just need two, and boom, I've got my two, my two points. So I'm just gonna connect them and make a line, and I've graphed my line. So let's look at number four. So you saw previously that I wrote in, I substituted a zero value in for a variable. Well, I'm gonna show you what else you can do. If you're looking for your x-intercept, if the x-intercept is when y is zero, Obviously, if I plug in a zero right there for y, no, it's not 20, it's two times zero, and two times zero is zero. So I'll have a lot of students that'll just like use their thumb basically to just cover this up. And then what we're left with is 8x equals 6. And then we solve for x, and we get x equals 6 over 8, which simplifies to. 3 over 4. So my x-intercept is 3 fourths 0, or if you're a decimal person, 0.75, 0. That's about right there. That's my x-intercept. So let's look at the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is when x is 0. So my y-intercept, I can do the same thing that I did for my x-intercept. The y-intercept is when x is 0. Well, I know if I plug in a zero for x right here, I'm gonna get eight times zero is zero. Well, that's just gonna cancel that term out. It's gonna go away. And I'm left with two y equals six. So what you can do is just use your thumb or cross it out and cover up that term, and you're left with two y equals six. When you solve for y, y equals three. So if I write that as an ordered pair, I'm gonna get zero, three which is right there. I only need two points to graph a line, so I can just connect those points. Let's go to our last example, and our last example is actually written in a different form. It's written in slope-intercept form. I really like slope-intercept form. I'm a fan. You can easily see your slope in your y-intercept. Well, look at that. You can easily see your y-intercept, but let's talk about why that works. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the x-intercept, because that's the one I've been doing first. So the x-intercept is when y is 0. That means that value right there is 0. So instead of y equals, it's going to be 0 equals negative 1 half x plus 2. Well, now you, let's use how we solve equations to solve for the value of x. So I need to undo this addition by subtracting 2, and I get negative 2 equals negative 1 half times x. All right, now I'm going to switch up colors here. So negative 1 half times x. Remember, when I'm solving for a variable, the goal is to get that variable all by itself. So I'm trying to move everything to the other side. How do I undo that fraction? I multiply by the reciprocal. That means you flip it. What's the reciprocal of negative 1 half? It's negative 2 over 1, which is just negative 2. So what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, which means my x-intercept is at 4, which is 4, 0. That's right there. So now let's look at the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x is 0. Well, that means I'm going to be plugging in 0 for the value of x right there. What is y? when x is zero, right? The y-intercept is when x is zero. You're essentially looking for f of zero. Remember that? Function notation, f of zero. What is y when x is zero? Well, if I negative one-half times zero, that's going to go away, and I'm just left with this constant over here. That's why we call that for y equals mx plus b, we call this the y-intercept because that's what you would get if you substituted zero in for the value of x, which means the y-intercept is two. How do I write that as an ordered pair? Zero, two, that's right there. And I'm just gonna connect those points and make a line. And that's how you do that. And that concludes your notes over x and y-intercepts. I hope it was helpful.